I think um, in terms of uh, today's time, I, I did want to um, use it to really talk about my own evolution um, of getting to here. Um, and I, and I, I will say that uh, um, it, it's, it actually slow roll itself um, is really an exciting, um, I think, uh, iteration of my own development is how I think about it. Because I, in my first life, I'm an engineer. Um, I um, found biking as a sport because I let my 18-year-old ego tell me that I should play football in the Big Ten instead of some small school in Wisconsin. So I came to the University of Minnesota to play football. And, and basically, um, everybody in college is big. Everybody in college is fast. And, you know, um, I, I just wound up being that guy on the team running the other team's plays. And I, and I was majoring in engineering. I didn't have time for that, right? So I quit playing football, and I started going to a, a gym off campus. But parking was horrible. So I started biking to the gym. Um, that was literally the beginnings. And, and I one day decided that I was enjoying biking too much to go to the gym. So I kept biking. But at this point in my life, my instinct was really to pursue the sport. So of course I wanted to race or I wanted to do race across America or it, it was very much anchored in that. Um, but I met, a, I met a, 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 an elder in my community. His name was Louis Moore. Um, he was biking and did not have any friends who biked either. So he, um, who was 20 years older than me, I started biking with me as an 18, 19 year old uh, because he didn't have any friends, uh, honestly. And um, we started biking together. And immediately as we started the biking, um, there was another instinct we had around, around building community, which I think um, is, is really um, an anchoring instinct is very important um, in terms of the work we do, that that instinct of building community is fundamental. And so we immediately began to, to look at ways we could build community uh, which led us to the formation of the Major Taylor Bicycling Club of Minnesota. Um, it was early in the, there are many Major Taylor clubs. There's one in Nashville, there's one in Memphis um, now, and we now have about 48 clubs. But Major Taylor, I think many people know now, he was the first um, American born black champion in any sport in 1899 in cycling. Uh, at a moment when cycling was the pinnacle of technological achievement, um, it was the ultimate human endeavor. Um, and, and so his, his story became um, important for us um, as a C story for what we were trying to do around building community. So, but still it was anchored in the sport. And, and we started the Major Taylor Bike Club. Um, it's been over 20 years, 22 years now, I think we started the Major Taylor Club 22 years ago. And we were trying to build cycling. Um, and what I, what I really found was that it wasn't working. Um, and this is over a lot of years. We, we were really trying to build the club and it wasn't working. And, and, and I don't, you know, I don't know. I mean, at that point it was a simple, I, we just wanted more black folks on bikes. It wasn't really anything bigger than that. It was just more black folks on bikes. Um, but this is in Minneapolis, even the eighties, nineties and biking is, 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 is kind of growing as a, as an experience. And so he and I get involved in just some of the different work around bike lanes um, and, and bringing at that point, I think they just wanted some black folks in the picture. Honestly, I think that really tokenism was the way that we did business in the eighties and nineties and early two thousands. So we were somebody's black friend that got invited to uh, a bike coalition or a planning meeting. And, but we learned about, about the industry, right? The engineer in me dug into this. And, but yet and still, we were really not very successful at it. And we spent a lot of time doing this. I, I think that's the other thing. We really were figuring out um, if we're really trying to, to invite Black communities uh, to be a part of this. And I, and I think I'm using Black communities as shorthand for all under marginalized communities in some regards, um, is that we, we really, um, I felt like we're not having success. And as I dug into it, the big thing for me became that the nature of the way we were doing it, where the bike and the type of bike and the type of biking were the center of our work. Um, and I think something I say often in the beginning of, of, of talking events around biking is that um, spandex scares people. Um, a lot of people in the same spandex you know, scare most people. And when everybody is in the same as spandex, it scares everybody. And so there, so really 
there was this thing that we were doing, but we showed up in with, with expensive bikes and it was about the sport and how far do you go and miles per hour. And we felt like we were managing all those things and inviting people out, but they were not having these experiences that really helped them grow um, in that way. So it, it really made us do a, a really deep analysis of, of what was going on. And, and for me, um, I actually had an aha moment uh, initially when I rode, started working with bringing black women to biking, which was something that we had not really, you know, we were just a sport club, but there was a tremendous amount of interest in uh, amongst black women. And this is roughly around 2004, 2000, because what we saw in the market was a lot of interest in black women's communities around, around just health healthcare, alternative medicine. I mean, they were the fastest growing group of vegetarians. They were the fastest growing group of alternative uh, medical people. And at this time in my life, I'm working for Aveda, which is a beauty company. So I'm, so I'm have all this interesting data, but a majority of our new participants were African-American women. And so as we began to work in that community, I began to pay attention to what worked what was working. And that was really the beginning of, of something different. I, you know, at this point, began to uh, connect nationally to a group of uh, bike advocates, um, primarily through League of American Bicyclists. And I really began to learn um, about policy and biking. Um, I then connect to someone who you may have heard of, Adonia Lugo. Um, we start working with Adonia. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a founding member of the Untokening um, and, and really begin to think about this is not just biking um, and cycling. This is about transportation. I mean, ultimately evolved into a language around mobility. And, and, and this, this is all in my own growth and my own thinking what the work is. And, and at that point, I'm traveling a lot and I bump into uh, uh, Jason and the team at Slow Roll in Detroit. I stumble on this Slow Roll event uh, that was huge. Um, it was, it was a, 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 I mean, a very different kind of bike ride as you all know. Um, and, and really I began to analyze, well, what's making this work and began to head back to Minneapolis and look at what are the things that we can do to make this very different. And so at that point, I began to be very, very active. And I, I'll say that what I, what I began to say, first of all, is that the intention of our work was never about the bike. It was not elevating the bike as transportation. It really became about this idea of how do we reconnect people fundamentally to the neighborhoods that they live in and that the bike was the perfect vehicle for that. How do we connect people to active living as a strategy for being more connected, being healthier, and the bike was the perfect vehicle for that. How do we build a strategy around uh, creating intergenerational family-based activities, right? And the bike was the perfect vehicle for that. How do we um, build agency around public policy in terms of how people feel about other communities? And the bike was the perfect vehicle for that. And, and for me, it really was a very big shift is that nothing in this was about the bike, but the bike was the perfect vehicle for doing many things that we want to do in terms of improving well-being. And that changed everything for us. 